Hi guys, welcome back to another Sidecraft episode. So the starter tree farm has been built up. I decided to build it in this lush cave biome here. I think it fits just nicely in there. It's also new settings for us. Mopo 12, of course, we didn't have caves this large. Doing something like this was never an option and I just really like how it looks in there. Because it's also kind of tricky to make a tree farm that is built in a plains biome look decent. So you have a lot of free floating redstone. It always looks a little bit odd. So you have, you have the two options to maybe add some structure to it. Um, so it, yeah, it doesn't look as floaty or just build something huge around it for the decoration. But something like this always actually fits in nicely in a cave. That doesn't look super odd at all. This could maybe just be suspended from the ceiling. So yeah, I think it was actually a good choice to build it here and maybe also something to keep in mind for future projects in case we don't have the time to make a nice decoration around it. Yeah, Lush Cave doesn't look super bad. Um, especially with the huge TNT blast chamber here. That's actually the sign I made about a year ago but haven't published yet. Uh, it's way larger than the older designs because it has three safety features. So I tried to improve things that people struggled with. So it's less compact, but kind of safer in case you make a mistake. Of course, the old design, in case you build it 100% correctly, was already 100% reliable and didn't fail. But if you make a mistake, then um, yeah, people struggled fixing it. So there's now yeah, there's three safety features. So the first one is, in case people made a mistake with the older design, always happened that logs got pushed in the middle, we have the TNT dropping down. And that of course caused the TNT to land on the block, blew up yeah, a huge part of the glass chamber. Um, so this can't happen anymore. There's also a reason why it's so large, because we're using push limit. You can see here those pistons, they push the logs in, yeah, more than 12 blocks away. So there's just no way they would ever fill the hole in the middle because they just can't push that many blocks. Um, then a second safety feature was that I reduced the amount of T flip-flops. Because what happened with the older design was people made a mistake. It maybe blew up. They rebuilt most of the design, but did not reset the T flip-flops. So T flip-flop is basically just a sticky piston and an observer. It could also be called a binary counter. And yeah, if that got messed up, then, well, it blew up again. Uh, and the third feature was that in the older design, you always had to place a couple blocks in the, the block streams to synchronize the two sides I was using. Now with this design, you don't need to do this anymore. So of course I mentioned that in tutorial that you need to do this. And it was also of course in the Labmatic, but people still ignored it and thought it's not necessary to place those blocks. Now with this design, uh, uh, the, you don't need to place any blocks anymore. So you could have this completely empty. So no locks need to be placed. And in case something goes wrong, you can just break all the locks again and basically go to the, the input. Oh, flight skills, <laughs> not there in the morning. So this is basically the output of the tree farm. And here yeah, we split up the locks for the TNT blast chamber. So that's why I also have to be pushed around a little bit to make it all synchronized with all four sides. So that's why yeah, this design is a bit larger than the old one. But yeah, there's those three safety features that, in case you make a mistake, uh, won't punish you as much. Maybe let me know what you think about this design. So it's not as compact um, and probably also a bit harder to build than the old one, but safer. Um, this might also be a design goal for some redstone machines. We've been running this machine also for quite some time now and still haven't run out of TNT so by just filling this dispenser here. You can already AFK an entire night. If you maybe put two double chests on the side of TNT, you can run it a whole week. Okay, um, so the yeah, tree farm itself works with four tree types, spruce, oak, birch, and jungle. We've been mostly running it with birch, um, but also actually gathered some jungle saplings. So we also get a couple of those logs here. So the sign is not the fastest, especially if you use something like the jungle uh, logs here, or the jungle saplings, because they can only grow seven high, so a lot of the attempts where the tree would have grown higher are basically aborted, but it still works fine in case you just need some logs. So it's definitely a good choice. Um, I made this here yeah, a couple years ago, still 
decent design, but by now we can yeah, make simpler ones as well. But the kind of limiting factor for the speed is actually the, the setup here with breaking the logs. Unless you build two TNT blast chambers if you would want to make a faster one. Alright, um, then... Yeah, if you use actually jungle trees, it also costs a bit more bone meal compared to yeah design that would allow to grow higher trees. But it's actually not an issue at all because... Let's turn this off again. There's also now a bone meal supply. And it's something we added afterwards as well. Unfortunately, we don't have a time lapse. Um, but there is now a moss farm on the side that produces 30,000 bone meal power. This one here. You can yeah, easily turn this on here. Probably know this design. I published it on YouTube already. Doc M was also yeah, using it on the Hermitcraft server. Made it actually pretty large. <laughs> it's a bit oversized just for the tree farm. Um, one or two of those modules would have been enough for the tree farm, but yeah, we also made it in case we need to bring bone meal somewhere else. So I'm sure you know how this works by now. It's widely used. Um, Got a dispenser here, bone milling, there's it a moss block, which causes yeah, the stone to be converted into more moss blocks. You push in stone from the side, moss blocks drop, yeah, get picked up by the hoppers, get composted, and then the bone meal is fed back to the dispenser. Yeah, the bone meal is the moss block. And then we after doing all of this, we have a plus of bone meal, which can be transported over to the Farm. As you can see here, all of the bone meal through a water stream goes to the tree farm and all of those chests have been filled up by now. Um, yeah, so we can basically run this 24-7 in case we just put enough TNT inside. Technically, of course, you can use a TNT duper, but just a reminder, as I said last episode, um, for this, yeah, uh, current phase of the Sidecraft server, I'm just gonna only use TNT if it's like really necessary. So in cases we need movable TNT, for example, for a for, for a stationary tree farm, always have the option to use yeah normal TNT. In case you make an efficient blast farm, it's also not too expensive. But of course, we still have to get the resources to be able to craft TNT which we've been working on a little bit more. So it was already not really an issue, but after my efforts saw my design for the creeper farm, he thought we need something faster. I mean, still thought it was a pretty neat design, uh, 5,000 gunpowder per hour, and we also got some string, which was pretty good for scaffolding and so on. He decided to make a faster creeper farm. So the old design is already gone, and there is a new one now. This is the same location. It's not too large, but it's way faster and it's really optimized for creeper farming. Actually got a time lapse of methods removing the old design and uh, building the new one here.
Alright, so let's check it out. It's a very minimalistic design. It uses a zero redstone, but it's still uh, super fast. Okay, so you already can see the creepers flashing. Those, of course, built very low in the perimeter, so we get uh, higher spawning rates. But this would, of course, be even faster if we decided to remove some bedrock and build it even lower. But already in this state, it's pretty decent. Okay, so let's have a look inside. Yeah, uh, you won't see the creepers for too long. Some might already be able to guess how this works. Okay, so what do we have here? So we got waterlocked blocks and dispensers below. Then we got sea pickles and boats on top. So what's happening here is, as soon as a creeper spawns, it intersects with the hitbox of the boat here and yeah, gets sucked in the boat. You probably know this behavior. And then the boat is actually drowning and all the passengers of the boat are ejected out of the boat immediately again, inside of the portals. So those creepers have basically a lifetime of, I think it's either two game ticks or one. I think they spawn, the next tick they're in a boat, and one tick later they're already in the nether portal. So yeah, definitely super simple design. Uh, we use the waterlocked blocks here basically just to spawn in the boats correctly at this precise position. So if you would place the boats, it's always this little, yeah, unless you super correctly align yourself, they're always a little bit off-centered. But that's why we use the dispensers here to place them in the waterlocked blocks so that is possible. Then they go up here. And this, the stair block that is also waterlocked, is basically, yeah, the block that causes the boat to... Well, methods always says drown. Not sure if that's the, the right word. Um... But yeah, you might know this behavior as well, if, if the boat is basically underwater, then all the passengers basically are ejected. The boats are underwater. Not sure if drowning is the right word, Methods always uses that. Okay, then of course, yeah, where do the creepers go? We also need to check out the nether side. So check this out. This is really impressive for that small of a farm that doesn't require any redstone. So this is already 180,000 gunpowder per hour and it's still a quite simplistic design which could also still be made faster. So we're just actually just using a boat here to push the creepers out. That's enough and well, it's more, more than enough gunpowder. Um, there's also some unloading we have, we have here. Of course with the new hopper minecarts. Things are really easy now. You can just... Yeah, push the minecart in there. Water streams in the nether becomes even easier. Then you have this huge gunpowder storage. Actually, not sure how long this has been running, but I could imagine that all of them are already filled. Ah, oh, there's still a bit of space available. So yeah. <laughs> and as I said, this farm can be made larger of course so there was only a small footprint and they yeah, made faster if you just build it lower if you do some bedrock removal but this actually if you would scale it up would be faster than a 1.12 creeper farm we had which we spent yeah, an eternity building on i'm sure you remember the design we had a huge perimeter so the design as soon as a creeper would spawn you would get shot into a portal but this is actually superior and if you just build it large enough it would even be faster than yeah, the old 1.12 design. Methods was also jumping gun a little bit, building such a fast creeper farm already. Technically, we don't need this yet. Uh, the old one would have been enough for our current projects, but yeah, he just came off this boat design and really liked it, and of course, he had to build it in so straight away. Understandable. <laughs> but what I'm struggling with right now is actually storing the output of the farms, especially as they get faster. Yeah. You can see here we just have this huge chest monster with loose items, like back in 1.8 days. Um, but yeah, what we really need is a shulker farm, which we're gonna build next episode or the one after. Probably gonna just use the design I made a while ago. Right now I actually don't have a lot of time designing stuff in creative. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do in the server. In survival, then I have to do all the video editing and so on. Um, there's really little time right now, so we're just gonna build uh, some farms that 
you already have. And then if there's maybe some time later, I can go into creative and, and look into this again, and we can also make a faster shulker farm. But it was still an early game, which is actually a struggle sometimes, especially when it comes to decorating projects as well right now. We just have this tiny block palette to work with, so there's not much you can do. We don't even have access to dice yet. Of course, we always can get a small amount, but if there's a, a larger project, then it gets really annoying if you need to get 500 flowers, for example. So stuff like that, step by step, has to be done. Of course, there's a second component that's required to craft TNT, which is sand, and we also have a little setup to farm this, of course, with a gravity block tube. But, uh, that's something we've been using for years. A couple end portals here. We, of course, used our illegal end portal frame blocks to get this here in the perimeter. So we're actually at minus 90k, minus 27k. Um, so the next stronghold would be way too far away from the new location, which in my opinion is also a bit silly. I think strongholds should also generate like, I don't know, uh, yeah, woodland mansions every couple thousand blocks somewhere all over the world and not just in a ring around spawn. But, well, at least we have the option now with the illegal blocks to make our own. Um, so our stance on sand tubing hasn't really changed as long as mulching doesn't make it really feasible. Get renewable sand, I'm gonna keep using it. But of course we could also maybe, at least in the beginning, decide to not dupe concrete because we have renewable gravel now at least. So we could dupe the sand, combine it with gravel and dye to get the concrete powder, which we then could turn into concrete. Might be also an interesting challenge. Um, maybe at first, but of course a concrete factory is also an insanely cool project where we dupe the concrete uh, powder, turn it into concrete and then blow it up. It's always a cool project, but yeah, let's see. There's, there's a lot of stuff we can do and uh, don't need to be super dogmatic about stuff all the time. Okay. Um, in case you have never seen this, what happens here is the sand or the falling block um yeah hits the end portal and at the same time it's turned into a block again so the falling sand entity is shot through the end portal frames and at the same time we get the blocks here it's basically duped um let's quickly yeah it's hard to get out of the water go to the end as well so we can see the falling blocks arriving there takes a bit <laughs> Distant horizons to unload the world. Here we go, they're basically over here and, and can be collected. Okay, um, it's also nice is now we could also, yeah, scale this up. It was a quite simple design and just build, instead of yeah, the usual, like, 12 sand blocks with you, but 24 around an end portal frame. We could just have a line of end portal blocks and, yeah, make it much faster in one location. For example, in 1.12 we actually had five sand tubers in five different strongholds, but now that we can place it anywhere, it would get a lot easier as well. Alright, so that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!